Hello, Bethel Assembly of God friends and visitors. Uh, welcome back if you're coming back for video two. Uh, my name is Rachel Croppet. I am the children's director here at Bethel Assembly of God. And since we haven't been able to do our normal children's church, we have moved to online videos. So I have a really, really important question for you. Are you ready? Which one is better? Reese's eggs or Cadbury eggs. Now you'll have to discuss this among your family and, and decide on the pros and cons, but I know everybody might have a little bit of a different opinion, but I'm in favor of the Cadbury eggs. I don't know about you, but you guys can talk about your, your favorite eggs, but last week, uh, we started cracking open a unique set of Easter eggs. These eggs are not filled with candy, but with items that remind us of the story of Jesus. The first one that we opened was the donkey. And we saw how Jesus came into Jerusalem a week before his death, riding on a donkey, like a king coming in peace. The next one that we opened had the coin in it. And we found that this coin reminded us of the betrayal of Judas. And then the third egg that we opened was a cup that reminded us of the love and obedience of Jesus. We know that Jesus chose to come and die for us because he loved us. He had the same free will that you and I do. And he could have said no. It was never even a question for him. Jesus loves us, and he was willing to do anything to save us. But that doesn't mean it was easy for him. Our first egg today, I'll open the orange one here. Can you see what that is? These are praying hands. Jesus went to a garden to pray right before his betrayal. The way Jesus prayed that night shows us how fearful Jesus was right as everything was about to happen. So if you have your Bibles, get out your Bibles. We're going to go into Mark chapter 14, starting at verse 32. So feel free to pause if you need to go find your Bible and find Mark 14. Verse 32. So I'll read through 42. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, which is like saying daddy, Abba father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The hour has come. Look. The Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Jesus was overwhelmed with emotion. He knew what he had to do to save us, and he knew how brutal it would be. His, his disciples had no clue what he was about to face, and they could not imagine how he felt. Even as he cried and prayed his heart out, they were sleeping completely unaware of what was about to go down. If there was another way to save us, Jesus would have gladly taken it. He knew our only hope meant suffering. 
and he was willing to suffer for us. So the second egg we're going to look at reminds us a little bit about this suffering. Inside is a small whip. You can see that. It's a reminder of just how bad things got for Jesus there at the end. So to read about this part, we are going to go into Luke. So we're still in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, the third chapter, or I'm sorry, the third book. And we're going to be in the 22nd chapter. So Luke 22, and we're going to start at verse 63 and just read 63 to 65. The men who were guarding Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and demanded, Prophecy, who hit you? And they said many other insulting things to him. Jesus was beaten with fists and with a whip, like this one. He had his clothes stripped away, he had a crown of thorns placed on his head. All night and all day, the men who guarded Jesus mocked him and laughed at him. They made fun of him for saying he was the king of the Jews and the Messiah. Jesus was humili humiliated and shamed publicly. But the greatest pain he felt didn't come from a whip or an unbelieving guard. It came from one of his own friends. So the third egg that we're going to open today... It has a little rooster in it. Let's see. So some of you might be familiar with this story that has to do with the rooster, but we're going to take a look at it. It's in Matthew, which is the first book in the New Testament, in chapter 26, starting at verse 69. So Matthew 26, 69 through 75. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him. You also were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway, where another servant girl saw him, and said to the people there, This fella was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know that man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses, and he swore to them, I don't know that man. Immediately a rooster crowed. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Before the garden, before Jesus' arrest, Peter vowed that he would never leave Jesus' side. But when Jesus was arrested, Peter feared for his life. He denied Jesus, not just once, not just twice, but three times, just as Jesus predicted and had told him. He turned his back on Jesus, even as Jesus was preparing to die for him. Jesus was willing to be beaten, mocked, ridiculed, and made fun of for our sake. He never wavered, never ran and hid, never backed down. He did what was necessary because he loves us. How sad that so many believers are so ashamed of the Savior, who was unashamed of them. So many of us hide our faith. We live just as simply as our friends when we're not at church. We never share what we believe with anyone. But Jesus was unashamed of us. We should be unashamed of him. We should be Christians 24-7. We need to be willing to live out our faith every day, not just on Sunday mornings when we come to church. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It's not easy being a Christian in a non-Christian world. We all want to fit in. 
We don't want our friends to laugh at us or tease us about anything, much less our faith. It's so much easier to stay quiet, to follow the crowd, and just to blend in. But we weren't saved by Jesus so that we could just blend in. We were saved so that we could carry the message of Easter to everyone around us, to the whole world. The friends whose acceptance you desire, the ones you're afraid will mock you or make fun of you, Jesus loves them too. And he wants them to know that he can save them from their sins. How can Jesus save them if we are afraid to live for Jesus? So this week, I want to challenge you to live out your faith wherever you go. Now, I know that you're not going to school like you normally do, and you're not maybe having the, the play dates that you would normally have, but you can still live out your faith in everything that you do. Maybe you're, you're on a, a video call for your classes. That's where you can live out your faith. Maybe you can write messages on your sidewalk in chalk about how God loves them and God came to save them and God died for their sins. There's ways, even when you're not able to be around everyone, that you can still live out your faith. So I encourage you to be willing to stand out be willing to be made fun of if it comes to that. Be willing to be different. If someone asks you about your faith, don't be afraid to share it with them. Tell them you love Jesus and then invite them to learn more about him. Invite them to watch this video with you. Jesus was unashamed of you. Do not be ashamed to say that you love him. Let's take a moment and pray because I know what I'm asking is not an easy thing to do, but we can pray and ask for God to give us courage. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of the, the beating and the ridicule and the making fun of and the mocking that you had to go through and the fact that you died on the cross for our sins, Lord, so that we can go to heaven. And Lord, we thank you that you love us so much and that you are not ashamed of us. Lord, please give each and every person courage to tell someone else about you, Lord, because we know that you want everyone to be saved. You don't want anyone to perish. And Lord, we thank you for the courage that you're going to give us this week to shine our light to everyone that we come in contact with. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, let's see if you were listening to everything that we talked about we have a little trivia review game. So this review game is true or false. So the way that you tell whether it's true is you put your thumb up. We've done this in kids church before but just in case you haven't been in kids church with us when we've done this one. So if the statement is true you're gonna put your thumb up. If the statement is false you're gonna put your thumb down. Got it? All right the first one says the whip in the resurrection egg reminds us of the whipped peanut butter in a chocolate egg. Yum. Is that true or false? Yep, that's false. The whip reminds us of what happened to Jesus before he went on the cross. The next statement. The praying hands reminds us of Jesus' prayers in the garden. Is that true or false? Yep, that's true. The next one says, the rooster reminds us that eggs come from chickens. Is that true or false? You got it. It's false. The rooster reminds us about Peter who denied Jesus three times. Next one. It is very easy to share your faith when your friends might make fun of you. Is that true or false? Yeah, it's false. It's not easy to share your faith when you think that you're going to be made fun of. Nobody likes to be made fun of, but we still have to do it because it's important to God. Last one. 
we should be ash we should be unashamed of Jesus and remember all the shame that he suffered for us. Is that true or false? We should be unashamed of Jesus. Yep, that's true. Good job. So it sounds like you were paying attention. So as promised, each week I want to give you a couple of activities that you then can do with your family or on your own to kind of reinforce some of the things that we've talked about. So one of the eggs that we opened had these in there, praying hands. So I wanted to take a couple minutes to talk about praying. So a lot of times in our life we rely on the adults the big people to do the praying and we just sort of bow our heads and, and go along with it. But this week I want you to do the praying. So I wanted to share with you there is something called ACTS, A-C-T-S, uh, for ways that you can pray. So I'm going to hold this up there. Make sure that you can see it. So what it is, it's an acronym. ACTS stands for A, Adoration. So this is the type of prayer where you tell God how wonderful he is, how awesome he is, and worship him. So this would sound like, Dear God, you are an awesome God. C stands for Confession. Now this one's not always easy, but this is where you tell God what you've done wrong and ask for forgiveness. Lord, I'm really sorry for giving my brother a hard time. I was picking on him today and being mean to him. Please forgive me for being mean to my brother. Not that any of you would ever do that, right? T stands for thankfulness. We thank God for who he is. We thank God for what he has given us. Thank you, Lord, for my family. Thank you for my health. Thank you for watching over me and keeping me safe. Then the S. This is kind of a big word. It's supplication. This is where you ask request of God. Now, you don't have to ask something of him every time you pray. But many times we, we do pray because we are in need of something. So this could be, you know, Lord, ask me or give me patience when I'm playing with my brother and interacting with my brother, that I'm kind to him. So this is just a guideline of different ways that you can pray together. But like I said, your prayer doesn't have to have all of these things. It just needs to be heartfelt. It needs to be something that you truly feel and something you truly want to say to God. And it can't be wrong. So that's one of your assignments. You're going to work on praying this week. And while you're doing that, you can do a little art project. So this is just a little prayer journal that I threw together, but it's just a piece of construction paper with some paper inside and I stapled it in the middle. And you can doodle and draw on the outside anything that you would like and you can call it my prayer journal. Now you might ask, well, what's a prayer journal for? So sometimes you might pray for something and you may not get an answer right away. But if you record it down in your prayer journal, you will know and remember then when your prayer is answered, you can go back and say, you know, God answered this prayer. Or, you know, if you're not the best at writing, you can draw some pictures in here of things that you're praying about. You know, if you're praying for your family, draw a picture of your family in there. And of course, you can decorate it however you like. The last activity that you guys can do, since we were talking about the rooster crowing, and I don't know if you know anything about roosters, but you know, they're, they're the head of the coop. They're in charge of all the chickens. So you can play Rooster Says with your family this week. So instead of Simon Says, you would say Rooster Says. And you say, Rooster Says to run in place and everybody would have to run in place. And then you would say, stop, 
but they would have to keep running because you didn't say Rooster Says. So it's just like the game of Simon Says. So that'll give you some fun things to do this week. And I just wanted to say thank you for joining me today. I do miss seeing all of your faces in person, but I know this is the next best thing until we can get together again. I'm praying for each of you, and um, I'm so blessed that each of you are here today. Thank you. Goodbye.